I've talked a little bit about um, how to get um, schemas started. Let's talk now about how to read them, how to look at them, how to, how to deal with ones that are a little bit more complex than the simple one that we just created. So the, um, the schema that I have shown here is Articles XSD. There's a link to it in your page. Um, and you'll notice that at this top level with everything closed up, all the plus buttons closed up, there's a whole list of things, elements in fact, and attributes that are at this topmost level that are under the title of schema. These are all um, root level or global elements. So there's two things you should know about root level or global elements. The first is that if they're at this level, they could possibly be the starting place for an instance. So I could start an instance with a title tag. And since there's no plus sign there, it would be kind of a small instance. All it would have is a title. Or I could start it with description. Or I could start it with li. But in, uh, in the work that you'll see in this class, the very first one is always the one that we intend to start our instances with. So every XML instance has to have a single root tag. And in our case, we intend that single root tag to be the prototype tag. So we have lots of different global elements, but only one of them is intended to be the root tag of the instance that we're creating. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, if they are at the global level, at this top level, then they're global elements, which means that they can be reused anywhere throughout the schema. So take this tag called title here. It's defined at this top level. And notice that I have a title here. Notice that I have a title also here. Both of these titles are just clones of this one major global at the top of the at the top of the schema title tag. If I wanted to change this title tag, for example, change maybe I'm going to change something about it, like its data type, which I don't really want to do, but let's just imagine that I change it. Notice I changed it here, and it automatically changes back in all of those places. That's the idea. I change it. I have it in one place, and it's reused throughout the whole schema. And let me figure out how to take that back. Edit, undo, there. Um, so those are the two things you need to know about the very first level of tags. They're at the top. They're called global. They're potential root tags. But really, only one of them is going to be used as a root tag. At least one of them in our world is going to be used as the root tag for the instance. And B, when they're at this top global level, that makes them global. That means you can reuse them. The reason that we put them there is so that we can use them multiple places inside the schema, like here and here. Same tag used in two different places. We want it to have the same meaning, so we define it once. OK, so that's concept number one. Concept number one is this idea of the top tags, the global ones, the ones that are at the, at, um, that are the potential root tags. Um, the second concept is the idea of a tag hierarchy. As I click down through these plus buttons, you see that I, I, I uh, reveal more and more of the children of the, of the, um, of the schema, or children of the instances that behave according to the schema. And that's really the major structural thing that we use a, a schema to do, is figure out who are the parents and who are the children. This tag prototype has no parent. That makes it a root tag. But it has children. It has the about children it ha child. It has the info type child. And it has the access structure title child. Um, and as we saw before, because they're connected with this sequence, we know that they have to come in this order. About has to precede info type, has to precede access structure. Um, uh, we also have attributes, and this prototype tag has these children show at editor tag and show what and what to transform um, attribute. Those attributes, as far as parents and children are concerned, are no different than elements. They're also children of prototype. So if I was to ask you how many children does prototype have, you would count one, two, three, four, five. If I asked you how many grandchildren it had, you'd have to count down this next level. You'd have to open this up, and you'd count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nine grandchildren and those five children. OK, so that's the tag hierarchy. And the idea that attributes and elements are equally children of a, of a parent tag. Now, what's the difference between an attribute and an element? Well, we'll talk much more about this later. But the biggest difference is that elements can continue to have children attributes can't have any children. If I right click on this and I try to say apply a pen a pen child, it only gives me this one choice which is not a choice that um, that is actually going to add a child to it. So attributes and elements are both children of the tags that they precede, but attributes aren't allowed themselves to have children and we'll learn more about the differences between them a little bit later in the course. What I want to focus on right now is the idea of the tag hierarchy. 
the fact that the main thing that you're doing in a, in a schema is defining this tag hierarchy and saying who's a child of whom. Okay, so the last concept to get across here is the idea that in the schema are all of the names, are all of the rules, are all of the definitions of the tags, but there are no values. You might, for example, want to say, well, I, can I just go in here and type the title in here? And the answer is no. Here in the schema, we're just simply defining that there is a title. If you want to go in and type in the title, you're going to have to, um, you're going to, have to go to the instance. So I have here the instance that corresponds to this schema. And notice that here we have a title, and it actually has a value. So here's the value of the about title. But in the, in, but in the schema, there is no values associated with it. And so I mention this because it's something that students often get confused about. The schema defines the rules, the schema defines the the schema defines the names of the tags, but it doesn't say anything about what you're going to type into those tags, or at least nothing directly. So in order to get values somewhere, we have to go to the instance. Schema is about rules, schema is about the existence of the um, of the tags, and the instance is about typing in the values of those tags. Okay, so what I went over in this in this short demo was the idea of reading a schema. Starting with the idea of the global element, and I told you that, that those global elements, those ones up at the top here, have two purposes. One is for sharing, and when, and when I call them global elements, that's what I'm implying, that they're shareable throughout various parts of the schema. The other is as to provide root nodes or document elements for the instances that this schema will validate. And I told you that in our class, the very first tag, the very first one you see, is always the one we intend to be the root element for our instances. And in this case, it's prototype. And um, so we see the two different ideas here. Prototype is meant to be a, a, a root element of our instance, and title is meant to be a global element that's shared. However, any one of them in this list could possibly be a global element that's shared, and it also could be possibly the root element of a schema, or only, uh, the root element of an instance, but we're only really ever going to use one, and that's the top one as the root element. I talked about the tag hierarchy, where, where the main thing you're trying to represent in an XML schema is who are the parents and who are the children. I talked about the idea that, um, uh, that these children in particular come in a sequence, so that it says there are three element children about info type and access structures and that they come in that order. I talked about the difference between attributes and elements. They are both children, so show editor tags is a child of prototype just as much as the about tag is a child of prototype. And the main difference that we're going to talk about right now or we'll be concerned with right now is that the about children the about tag can go and have its own children, but show editor tags up here is the end of the line. It can't have its it can't have child elements or attributes. Okay, finally we talked about the idea that the prototype, the, um, the values do not go in the schema. Only the tag names, only the definitions go in the schema. If you want to put values in, you're going to have to go over to the instance or create an instance. Okay. I'd like to give you a top level overview of schemas in Oxygen. And what I want to talk about is viewing a schema, then getting started making a schema, and then finally um, assigning a schema to an instance so that the instance behaves according to the rules of the schema. So let's start with um, viewing a schema. And what I want to point to is uh, uh, a couple of different ways to view a schema, one of which um, I'll show you now and then we won't use any more, and one of which um, we'll be using constantly through the rest of the class. So you can see the different ways that you, um, that you look at schemas down here along the bottom. This is consistent for uh, Oxygen. Whenever you have different views of the currently open file, they'll all be down in this, in this um, uh, bar down here. And the two that we're concerned with are the design view and the text view. Grid view and author view we won't really worry about at all. So let me first show you the text view. And what I want to show you in this text view is that a schema is simply another kind of XML file. Now, I don't think it's really very easy to work with schemas in this view, and so we're not going to do it very much, but I think that um, some of you may be interested in this, and, and really, if you get deep enough into schemas, you'll inevitably find yourself in this view. Uh, let me get rid of that box. You'll inevitably find yourself in this view, and so it's worth um, just a moment to talk about it. Uh, it's an XML file, so I can close it up. As an XML file, it has a root tag, and notice that root tag says XS colon schema. The tag is named schema, and that XS colon that precedes the tag says that the schema tag 
is part of the family of tags for XS, in other words, XML schemas. So the XS is sort of the family name, or, what's my, or what is more commonly known as the namespace, and the word schema is a tag. And you can see that then it, op it, it closes up, and we can see all of the top-level elements, the elements that are at the top of the hierarchy. Notice there are multiple elements in some things called groups that are all at the top of the hierarchy, and I can close them up and I can drill down just like any other XML file. Um, but this XML file is all about defining rules. So this rule, for example, says there is an element called prototype, and it's at the very top. It's a root element. It's a, it's a global element. Okay, we'll talk more about that in, in a minute, but for now, I just want you to see this view. Know that it exists. Know that XSL, XML, uh, excuse me, know that schemas are actually just XML files. And then conveniently forget that because the view that we want really is this view. Much easier to work with, much more graphic, tells you exactly what you need to know with a minimum of sort of noise involved, and allows you to progressively drill down through the schema to see that the root tag is called prototype. Um, under the prototype is an about tag, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so that's the difference between um, the the chart view, or what's called the design view, um, and what's also called uh, and and the text view of a schema. So let's move on now and talk about starting a new schema. So now my job is to create a schema from scratch. I'll say file new. Get this little box that asks me what is what do I want to create. Click on schema. I don't need to customize the schema. I could just create, click the create button, and now I'll get a blank schema. And all it says is schema. Most of what I need to do for schemas is going to be from a right click menu. Every so often I'm going to have to scoot over to this little attributes tab over here, and even less often to the facets tab. But really, the most of what I need to do is going to happen from uh, a right click. So I right click on the schema. I say new global, because that's about all I can do new global element and I'm going to call that root. So there's my root element. Now from the root element I can start adding children. In order to add children I have to put something in between the parent and the children and what I can do is put either a sequence or a choice or this thing called all. Would you stop doing that? And now I'm going to and so the normal course of events and what I'll do 99 percent of the time is I'll choose sequence and now this says I have children in a particular sequence and I'm going to append another child. I'll call this child1. Okay, so now I have a root tag and a child1 tag. I can click again, right click on that sequence tab, on that sequence icon, use, choose another element and say child2. Now what I've created is, and I can edit it by double clicking because I spelled it wrong, C-H-I-L-D. Now what I have is a root tag and under the root tag are two children, child 1 and child 2, and those children are in a sequence. This icon here is the sequence icon. As I said, it's what you'll use almost all the time. And it says that child 1 and child 2, the rule is that root 1 has these two children, and they have to go in that order. Okay, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time going into the details of, of schema rules. I just want to give you an overview and give you sort of the feel of how you work with these schemas in Oxygen. So I created a new schema and I created a root element, I put a sequence on that root element, I created a child1 and a child2, now maybe I want child1 to have an attribute, so now I'll say append child attribute, notice all from the right click menu, and I'll call that, let's see, ID. So child1 has an ID. Another thing, I and I think that's about as far as I'm going to go with the creation process because we'll talk much more about this in the future. Now why will this box not go away? Um, fine, okay keep clicking it and now I'm just going to try to make it go away. Okay, so that's the idea of creating a new schema. I said file new, now let me save this schema, click the little save button, it'll ask me where I want to save it and I'm just going to put it in my temp directory for now and I'm going to call it um, test.xsd. Okay, now I have text.xsd. The next question is how do I create an instance that behaves according to this schema? And to do that, I'm going to say File New again. And now instead of Schema, I'm going to say XML Document. And this time, I do want to customize. The customization that I want to make is to assign the schema to the instance. So I'm going to navigate and find my schema. And I'm, now I'm going to say Create. So what I did was I said File New. And then I said Customize. And under the Customize thing, the only thing I really need to care about in here is um, finding the schema URL. 
I click create and, and it creates a new XML document with my root element and then a child one element and a child two element um, and this thing right here this XSI no namespace location that forges the link between the schema file the XSD file and the instance file so let me save this file and I'm going to I'm going to um, save it with a file name that relates it to its schema test so it's test XML and text SSD you'll see this over and over again in this class test XML and text SS XSD are named similarly so that we know they point to each other I'm going to save it and now I can get rid of the rest of this path to turn my um, absolute path into a relative path what this says is the schema this little attribute here says I'm all about the schema the schema is called text XSD and because there's no path it's assumed to be in the same folder I want you to do this too when you create an instance and a schema that are linked together I want you to put them in the same folder always in this class and name them in such a way that they're linked together and then when you reference the schema don't put any path in there and believe me if you don't do that at some point your life is going to be miserable because you won't know why things are going wrong and it's because you're looking at the wrong schema for this instance okay so as you work with the schema notice we have a little green dot here and when we have the green dot here it says that the the schema is valid I can break this instance and make it not in uh, not invalid but um, not well formed because now this tag isn't well formed and I mouse over as we've seen before and I get some idea of why the, the, the it's not well formed now it is well formed now it's still well formed but it's no longer valid because there's no such thing as a BBB tag inside of the schema so if I mouse over here it'll tell me some message that hopefully someday I'll be able to understand that there's no such thing as a BBB tag right and so now I get an indication not of um, a lack of well-formedness but a lack of validity I take that away and I get greenness back anytime that I want to make sure that I'm checking validity I can check this little I'll click the little checkbox down here at the bottom of the screen it says documents valid I have the green up here I know everything's okay alright so what I went through with you was viewing a schema the difference between the text view and the design view the design view is the one we're going to be working in it's this one right here where we see everything nice and graphic and the text view which is the real view of the schema but not one that we're going to be concerned much about I talked about getting started with the schema where we go file new create a new schema and um, how to add things like a root element and sequences and child elements and attributes and I just got started with how to work with schemas we'll talk much more about that in the future finally I showed you how to start a new instance from a schema by choosing file new new XML file choosing to attach the schema to it saving it in the same folder as the schema that's that is its schema and then changing the path on the link between the schema and the instance so that it's a relative path showing that they're in the same directory